Welcome back for my two star book reviews. So I did my one star ones, I don't know, like a week or so ago. Here are my two stars. So these are definitely not the worst books and honestly some of these do vary on like the reasons why they're not a high rating, but let's jump into it. So for this one, I do have 13 books. So I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail for each, just kind of like a brief reason why. And then if you want to watch the full reviews for any of them, I will link them below or you can search for them on the channel. So the first one is Modern Witch by Devin Hunter. He writes his book like a podcast. <laughs> and like, while I enjoy podcast style of like writing and like listening to, I don't want to read it in a book. When I sit down to read a book, I want to have it be informational. There's a very particular style of writing and word choice that's used for informational books. Look at Christopher Penzak, Deborah Blake, Scott Cunningham. Like, there's a lot of authors that really hit this middle ground. He doesn't in Modern Witch. <laughs> He's very much, it sounds like a podcast. Everything is very surface level. Nothing's really explained. If you wanted to have somebody like have a brief of witchcraft, maybe, but there are better books for that anyways. So it's kind of like, what's the point? Biggest thing I remember from this book, and I remember vividly complaining, is the actual layout of it. It looks and feels like a magazine. Don't like that. Way too colorful. And like, it it literally, it just feels like it's a magazine. And there was a number of pages where the font was so hard to read. And I normally don't have a problem with that. But even I was struggling. I'm like, this was the stupidest font to print. First of all, like, I feel so bad for any of like the dyslexic people out there who would try to pick up this book. Like, it was just not it for me. Then we have The Pagan Book of Living and Dying. This book was completely and utterly not helpful. <laughs> and like, it is the big push for why I'm currently writing the book that I am because that book had nothing of what I needed. I It didn't have anything. If you are being a death doula or a death priestess or priest, that is your book. But also it doesn't have everything that you would really need. It's very much their tradition, so it's super heavily swayed to their beliefs, not really leaving any sort of room of, like, encouraging other beliefs. On top of that, like, there are so many things that it's, like, bordering into, like, sketchy behaviors, like, actively encouraging you to keep a body at home, and it's, like, sometimes that is the case, but sometimes, like, legal people need to get involved. Because, like, if you die under certain circumstances, and also, even with that in mind, like, the paperwork that needs to be filed, like, and of course, if they're a donor, like, if you keep them at home, they can't be a donor anymore. Like, there's a lot that goes into it of, like, and also, honestly, that book, like, I feel like it was illegal. They had an open fire uh, cremation for one of the chapters that they had talked about. And they were like, well, we talked to a lawyer. And he was like, just make sure you have, like, a lot of witnesses. And I'm like, that's super not how legal things work at all. Like, I know the death industry makes people squeamish. People don't want to talk about it. But, like, that, I, mm, my morbid curiosity has looked it up. Ask a mortician has talked about it. And less laws have changed. It's only legal in, like, one city in, like, Colorado. The rest of the United States, it's a hard no. It has to be under very specific conditions, such as a crematorium, and you get to hit start. <laughs> like, it's not a thing. Other countries, there are definitely different laws and stuff, but like, here, where the book is based, no. And also, the fact it doesn't have, like, anything that you would need. So, I've turned to it so many times. It has nothing. It's like one of the most pointless books I own. <laughs> and especially when you're, like, going to the book, wanting specific things, that shouldn't be that complicated. Funeral rites, grieving processes as a witch. No. Why would you have that? Absolutely not. So I truly don't love that book. Then we have Magic and Power of the Goddess. Honestly, I, I got rid of this book. <laughs> it's one of the few that I've actively already gotten rid of. I have a few more that I'm planning to just get rid of. This is one of those books that it just, it wasn't it for me it was a little too christian and just weird and like i know it's their tradition it just it wasn't it for me personally so goodbye book it was nice to get rid of you this one i actually just put into the 
donation box like yesterday, and that is The Four Agreements. That book is so popular, I hate it. It is so stupid. It definitely is a law of attraction kind of a book, and I'm not a law of attraction kind of a person. Uh, it doesn't work the way they're acting like it does. It definitely has a lot of victim blaming, and everything is your fault, and that's not how it works. There is some randomness to the universe and some chaos, hence why we have trickster and chaos gods. Like, it exists in the world for a reason, and in The Four Agreements, everything's just kind of your fault. So the next one is The Green Witch. It's not it for me either. This book, it's constantly telling you to go look up other information to the point that it's like, then why did you write this book? Because you say nothing. And the stuff that is mentioned has been regurgitated from so many books and written better by other people already. So like, if you're not gonna add to the conversation and then you're just gonna tell people to go read the other books anyways, it feels like a cash grab. Again, is it the worst thing ever written? No. I, I do have one coming up in June that will, for, I don't know when it will ever be removed from the shelf, the little pedestal of the worst book ever written, ever. But you'll see that next month on uh, June 6th, I think. I, I usually plan ahead. So we have the teaching handbook for like witches and pagans or something like that. It was really not that helpful. <laughs> it didn't actually like lay out anything for you. To be honest, the end part of Living Wicca does cover the topic better on like how to teach and like what to teach and to have like certain things in mind. And most of this was really geared towards like in-person classes. And while that's one form, it's extremely dated and really it shouldn't have been dated at the time that book was published. Like it was definitely a thing at that point. And now it's really outdated to be honest because like we do a lot online. Most witches are going to find their first like mentor, coven teacher. That space is now 90% online. Because in person, it's usually just not practical. You don't have a whole lot of options. There's usually a lot of drama. Occasionally, you're gonna have issues of like personality clashing, but also like if you're a minor, you might not be allowed in or you shouldn't be allowed in. And like, you might have to travel really far or like timing's never gonna line up because you like have a life, you have a job, you have kids, whatever. Like there is so much that is solved by doing it online. And like, is doing a ritual in person great? Yes, if you have social anxiety, not so much. So like, there's a lot, and yet they have this like, better than thou attitude towards doing it in person versus online. And as somebody who teaches online, I, I'm a little offended. And like, they're like, well, who's gonna take their laptop outside? I'm like, uh, you don't have to. Also, smartphones were a thing. So the next one is the Strength Finders 2.0. Honestly, it is a marketing scam. That book is a marketing scam. <laughs> like, is it bad? Meh. But like, the fact that you have to buy a book to do the test or buy an expensive test, because these are like 25, I think was the cheapest option. And they go up to, I think like it was a hundred or more dollars for a test. That is just to tell you a personality thing. And because of that, and the fact that it's constantly pushing for you to go and they only give you one access code too. That code works once and then you're done. And I'm like, this is so much scam. This is so stupid. No, again, is it the worst? No, it's just scammy. Again, that's why the two stars is like, there's a variety of reasons why we're sitting here at two. So the next one is the Norse Shaman. I had high hopes for this book. They were not met. So this is really for a very specific person and I am not that person. So this is for people who are really into reconstructionism, which is a lot of the Norse community, to be honest. It is quite a bummer and like one of the reasons I would never use that title because that community can be uberly toxic, which we will get to later in this video with one book in particular. But it's just not... I'm not that person. It's written very academic, but also I did feel like I had to research other things to like fact check and be like, is that legit? Because 
pagans of all brushes of life love to have rose-colored glasses towards our past and to make history look different and to fit a specific narrative. And so I just don't, I don't always trust pagan historical context. Like, I feel like we need to have a balance with those because a lot of times, again, it gets romanticized a lot. It's actually the next book that is the one I was going to talk about. So The Nine Doors of Midgard, the book itself has its own issues, have a whole video talking about that, but the community attached to that book is so toxic. It is the most toxic group I have encountered. And like, again, I've been a witch. It's gonna be 14 years this autumn. Like, it's a long time to be in communities and have people not like you. And being online since like, I think I started my channel in like 2011. So I've had my fair share of trolls. And like, these ones are like a very specific brand of like, really? You're not helping your case. I know that like, that community has issues already. And like, I, it is rare that like, I pull out like a feminist card, but we have to pull it out for that book. And that community, because it is definitely like, incel like men. Let's just be real. It's white dudes that are definitely middle-aged to older, like, you know, at least 40s plus. Sometimes you might find younger ones, but all of the ones that I had commenting, definitely 40 plus. And they attack you on like personal levels of like, well, you're a woman, you would never understand things. And you're just an idiot and you couldn't understand anything. And it's like, block, delete, block, delete. I don't tolerate it. Like if you're going to attack people, you can attack points, but you don't need to attack people. And like, they're just a toxic group. If you don't agree with the book, they're like, you didn't understand the book. I'm like, I kind of think I did. Um, you cannot like books. It's the same exact energy. Actually, if you want to go on a rabbit hole, it's not related to this book. Same energy though. Slightly different, but same. And I'm actually planning on recording that later today. This book, this community, whoo! Like, people who read The Lightning Thief and didn't love it, and then they review it, those comments that are like, you just didn't understand, oh my god, same same vibes. I'm never reading a Thorson book and talking about it again. Like, I've literally had to turn off the comments from that one because they're just horrible. I, they don't go to any other videos of mine, so I know they're not subscribers or anything. Like, they just specifically seek out anybody who doesn't put Thorson on a pedestal. It's a toxic community. I do wish that, like, the Norse community honestly had more women in it and more women authors and like, not even just women, but like n not, not white dudes. It's, you know, like have some people of color, have some different cultures, <laughs> like people from around the world working with these gods. Cause like working with like Celtic deities living in America is a little different than if you live in like, you know, the UK or even Europe. I feel like that'd be a little different too, but like, it's just, we don't have that for the Norse really there's like not that many and it's mostly filled with old white dudes that are pretty racist and hateful and misogynistic it's a it's a community to say the least it's just not what I want to be a part of and I wish was better continuing along we have the Wicca handbook again it's just, I didn't like it again that's what I'm gonna say for all of them it's the two stars for a reason but this one was just pretty mediocre. So the thing with this book is that it really is specifically like goddess-centric Wicca-ish. Cause some of the spells in it were pretty sketch. The one for Odin was super weird. And I'm like, in what universe? <laughs> and like they picked really random deities, but also it relied heavily on like you knowing stuff, but also didn't, like it just, it felt kind of intermediate, but kind of not. The past, definitely rose-colored glasses. You need to research further from people who aren't pagan, because, like, the bias is real across the board. You kind of have to pick and choose as you go, because the bias is just woven through there. So, like, it can get difficult, but this definitely has some rose-colored glasses to it. 
And again, it does feel like a Diana Wicca sort of thing, where like the goddess is like the central. And then you have just have like, oh yeah, I'm a god. Kind of an attitude, just wasn't it for me. Then we have the meditations for healing, again, with the law of attraction crowd. And also the fact that like, this dude put his name as like, the name on the book, but then like, really didn't write like so much of it. Honestly, this book just needed to not be a book, it needed to be a CD, and it would have been better. Then we have one that is also in my donation box right now, which is Who Were the Celts? This one is not necessarily a normal witchy book, it's more of like learning the history, and like it's so bad. <laughs> it jumps all over the place in the timeline, there's like this huge focus for like half the book on like the Roman Empire, and it's like, but but about the Celts, that's like the title of the book. But no, we're just gonna talk about the Romans. And then like all over the place, like then we're talking about like Bush, the president from like the early 2000s and 90s or whatever. It was before I was like a voting age, so, like I didn't care about politics, but like talking about him because he had Irish heritage and like, then there was like this huge weird focus on just Ireland. Like it was really not good. It was, it was just, yeah, and like you could tell he totally had a bias too, and it was just like, you know what? No, bye. And then lastly, we have one that I just barely had the video go up for. I did read this a little bit ago, because again, I'm trying to get ahead on my uploads, so like I'm reading books now mostly for like June as you're watching this, because the rest of the uploads are really behind. We're recording this the day you see this. For Witches, Warrior Women, Heretics, whatever that book, I j it wasn't good at all. So like the examples from it were not actually like really good. <laughs> like a lot of them were like Christian examples and people who would have been horribly offended if you called them a witch or a heretic. So like why are you now calling them that? And like there was like a weird like fantasy that the author had that I think it was Anne Boleyn, like Henry VIII's wife, was like secretly a witch but she has no basis for this and it's just like this fantasy she's created, which like, that'd be a cool fiction book to probably read, I guess. I personally feel like Leave the Dead to be dead did not bother them much, especially like putting things onto them that they wouldn't have wanted for themselves. Like if you called on Scott Cunningham as a witch and being like, dude, I want to honor you at Samhain, I don't think you'd have a problem with it. Do I think that like calling on Joan of Arc and being like, ah oh, yes, you are now for the heretics, you are our symbol. I think she'd have an issue with it because she considered herself to be the voice of God or whatever or listen to the voice of God or something. So like it was just really weird and then you had like random characters from like the Bible which is like ick for me. Like it just it wasn't it wasn't good. It really wasn't good. Watch the full review to see why but like the basics is no just hard pass. So anyways currently those are all of my two star books. I'm sure I will have more as we go along. But yeah, those are my two stars so far. I would love to hear which ones are your two star books for the witchcraft community in the comments down below. Huge thank you to my patrons. I'll have their names here on the screen. If you'd like support me get access to exclusive content, it is patreon.com slash nightwillowcrafts. Make sure to like and subscribe. I post every single day. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and blessed be.